Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is day 232, October the 26th, 2017, Thursday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Boy, so much to cover today. We'll try to squeeze it all in if we can. So today, uh, we're still going to follow up on the dossier, the fallout, and the aftermath. For those of you who watched my video yesterday, uh, after the story had broke, I suggested to you that what made the Washington Post come out and run the story was the fact that they have been probably following this story very closely because they probably have known the source, uh, the Democratic source, who was funding the dossier. And the fact that they were following the story very closely, following, I'm sure, the civil suit with Mr. Gubarev as well, I'm sure that they had someone in the courtroom, this is what I said yesterday, someone in the courtroom who watched the attorney, the general counsel, representing the House Intelligence Committee and Devin Nunes making the argument to the judge why they should be allowed to uh, get the bank records of Fusion GPS. And of course he used precedent, law, and history. And of course he made a slam dunk case. I read his argument. Now, obviously someone from the Washington Post was at that hearing and they came back to the office and said, man, they laid out a slam dunk argument. I'm absolutely 100% sure that the judge is going to rule that the bank for Fusion GPS is going to have to turn over those records. And when they do, they're going to find out what we know. So we can either uh, be the, kabo the caboose on this thing and be late to the show, or we can get out ahead of it. If we get out ahead of it, we get credit for breaking this major story as well. It gives us a chance to uh, allow those, uh, those who are collaborating with so that they can get out and come up with a strategy to how, uh, uh, on how to respond to the story uh, so that they won't look so bad and get caught blindsided like a deer in the headlights. So this is exactly what I said yesterday. Well, today, Chuck Ross, probably the reporter following the dossier closer than anyone, who, of course, writes for the Daily Caller, came out and said exactly, pretty much exactly, what I said. Chuck Ross today is stating that, um, uh, let's see, that, uh, that uh, the Washington Post obviously knew that the Intel Committee would win the case to get Fusion GPS bank records, so they came out to get ahead of the story. It's exactly what I said. I went into a little more detail about how that probably played out, but basically uh, Chuck Ross is saying the same thing, reaching the same conclusion I came to. Something prompted them to come out with that story when they did because they've had this information. And we're learning from other people, some other sources that we're hearing, saying, oh, well, you know, we, we knew it was uh, the DNC and the Rotten Reverend Clinton that were the donors. Oh, we knew that. We just didn't say anything. So now there's people coming out saying they knew this all along. But that's neither here nor there. It doesn't really matter what they knew or what have you. All that matters is what's come out in the public record now. And no one is denying it. As far as I know, the Rotten Reverend Clinton has not made a statement on it yet. I do understand from who one of my sort yes, uh, one of my subscribers, one of my favorite subscribers, Patty Willing, has put into the comments section that Debbie Blabbermouth Wasman Schultz has come out denying any knowledge of the dossier. That's what Patty is telling us. Now I haven't had time to look into too much of what Debbie Blabbermouth Wasman Schultz has said about it because Quite honestly, everything she says is a lie. You can take anything Wasserman Schultz says and take and, and take the exact 180 degrees opposite of what she said, and that will be the truth. She's just like the Rotten Reverend, a pathological liar. Now, I did find where Tom Perez, the current head of the DNC, has denied having any knowledge of the dossier or having anything to do with it. That also would be a lie. But we learned something else today from Chuck Ross at the Daily Caller, we're learning that an attorney at Perkins Coy, Matt Geringer, sent a letter to Fusion GPS attorneys last Tuesday, relieving them from their confidentiality agreement regarding the dossier project. So this tells us that the reason why GPS couldn't talk uh, to the uh, House Intel Committee, or the reason why they haven't been able to disclose their source, is because they had a legal confidentiality agreement with this law firm Perkins & Coy, which is who employs Mark Elias, who was the general counsel for the Rotten Reverend Clinton's campaign. So he absolved them 
uh, from any uh, confidentiality agreement last Tuesday, setting the stage for them to release the story and uh, making sure that Fusion GPS didn't get blindsided by this. So you can see how that works. But Mr. Geringer, the attorney at Perkins Coy, says that Fusion GPS approached them in March of 2016 to see if they wanted to continue or the opposition research on the dossier. And in April of 2016, one month later, the deal was inked. And he also says that there had been a Republican donor uh, had been working with GPS Fusion since September of 2015. And uh, of course, we still haven't had any confirmation on who that was, but we have a lot of ideas who that may have been, possibly Senator Magoo. Some people suggest maybe Mitt Romney. Some people initially suggested a donor close to George or Jeb Bush. So who knows? And who knows if there even was a Republican donor? We don't even know. But what's, in, what's important about this timeline is that we've been led to believe that the Democrat donor only came into the picture after the primary, after Donald Trump had won the primary. We're being told up to this point, had been told up to this point, that the GOP donor was the one paying for the dossier until Trump won the nomination. Then uh, Fusion GPS went looking for a Democrat donor. But according to the attorney who would know, it was his law firm that signed the, the ink the deal and was handling the dossier for the rotten Reverend Clinton and the DNC. He's stating that they originally spoke back in March and that they inked a deal in April. That would be two months before Trump won. So, it appears that the Reverend, rotten Reverend Clinton and the DNC actually contracted with Fusion GPS in April, two months before Trump even won the nomination. He still wasn't the GOP nominee at that point. That changes the timeline and that drastically changes the narrative. We'll have to think more about that and see what that tells us. In the meantime, we have going on MSNBC, the former spokesperson for the rotten Reverend Clinton campaign, Brian Fallon, coming out and saying that, well, Hillary may have known about funding the dossier. Fallon says he did not know himself. And this is absolutely insane for him to make a statement like that. What do you mean she did may, may not have known? Of course she knew. She was the client. She was the one paying $5.2 million for the dossier. Of course she would be, uh, at the very least, getting uh, the information from the dossier. And I would have to assume, seeing as how she was the principal making the payment for the research on the dossier, that she should certainly have gotten not only information from the dossier, but she should have gotten the actual 35-page document, the entire document. If anyone would have got a copy, it would be her. They were paying GPS Fusion for that document. Of course they would get the entire 35-page document. They're the ones that were paying for it. McCain got it for free. Comey got it for free. Other people got it for free. BuzzFeed. Don't know if they paid for it, but they certainly got it. We'll get back to them later. To say that 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 Hillary may have known, of course she knew. This guy must think we're idiots. And he's certainly an idiot for even trying to sell that theory. And we also know because uh, in the about the middle, maybe even earlier than that, in September is when Hillary Rot Rotten Reverend Clinton started, you know, making little statements about you know Trump and the Russians and this and that type of thing, and probably that was a cue to the media that it was okay to go ahead and start talking about this and digging into it. She was sending out the clues to the media. Uh, to let them know it was okay to start talking about these points that she wanted them to start reporting on it. Because my guess is that they had been receiving this information from Mr. Elias, her general counsel, who was the middleman between the rotten Reverend Clinton, the DNC, and uh, GPS Fusion, that, that, that they were feeding some of this information in bits and pieces 
piecemeal basically out to liberal outlets, media outlets. And so, and probably they were told, hey, just sit on this until you get uh, the cue that it's time to start talking about these things. And so the Rotten Reverend and some people in her com campaign, Robbie Mook and Mr. Fallon and others, started giving little hints about this uh, Trump-Russia collusion thing. And this was occurring back in the early weeks of September um, as the general election was, was coming uh, toward, to, to, to a head uh, just prior to the November vote. So, of course, the Rotten Reverend Clinton was the principal payee for the dossier. Of course, she was getting information about the dossier. And for, certainly, because she's the one paying for it, probably got the entire dossier and its entire 35 pages, the finished format, the final produced copy, the final produced product that GPS Fusion got and was told to give a copy of to McCain. And I'm certain if, if Mr. Steele directed Fusion GPS to give a copy to McCain just for the hell of it, it certainly GPS Fusion was going to give a full copy of it to their client, the one paying them to produce the dossier. Of course, the rotten Reverend Clinton and her campaign, along with the DNC, had the full dossier. This is insanity to suggest otherwise. The cash. According to court filings, Christopher Steele's attorneys say that Steele was contracted in June of 2016 by Fusion GPS. Keep in mind, these are the uh, court filings from the civil lawsuit by Mr. Gubarev against Mr. Steele in the UK. We also learned that Steele did not talk to his sources directly, but used intermediaries. And what was the motivation? Money. Steele paid the intermediaries, and they paid these Russian sources who are identified in the dossier as sources A, B, C, D, and F. Steele also cites these sources as anonymous. He states these sources by their station, such as senior Russian foreign ministry, top level intel official, senior Kremlin official, source close to Igor Sekran, the head of Russian oil giant Rosneft, and of course close associate of Vladimir Putin, and also cited one source who was a close official to the Trump campaign. That would be Carter Page. Of course, Carter Page, like Mr. Gubarev, is saying bullshit. That is bullshit. I did not meet with this man, Mr. Sekin, Sekin, Igor Sekin. I had no meeting with him. It never happened. It's salacious. It's a lie. It's defamation. And therefore, Mr. Carter, Carter Page, has joined the Alpha Bank in Russia, and they have now filed a defamation lawsuit against Christopher Steele and BuzzFeed. They're going to do the same thing Mr. Gubarev is doing. Collect some cash and clear their name. And this is really the only source, if you read the dossier, which I have five or six times closely, this is really the link, the only link. This is really the pivotal point of the dossier which links Trump to Russia collusion and that is this alleged meeting between Carter Page and this Russian uh, oil giant official, head of Russian oil giant official, Rosneft, which Carter Page says did not happen. He's willing to go to civil court and force, force Christopher Steele and BuzzFeed to prove it. And they can't. And when they can't, Carter Page is cleared and BuzzFeed is going to pay up along with probably Christopher Steele. And it looks like now, <laughs> possibly the Rotten Reverend and the DNC. We'll get back to that in a moment. So this is the linchpin. When you remove that linchpin, the Carter Page alleged meeting with this Russian oil giant official, once you remove that, the entire thing collapses. And this is what we're going to find. The entire thing collapses. Keep in mind, that what Mr. Steele was saying is that he, we'll get back to this in a minute, but 
Mr. Steele is saying that the intermediaries is who he was talking to, not the actual sources. He's saying there was people in between him and the inter, uh, him and his sources, being what he describes as, or his attorneys describe as intermediaries, who Chrysler Steel would give them money, the intermediaries, and the inter intermediaries would give the Russian alleged sources the money Steel gave them. Everyone was being paid. And who was actually footing the bill for all of it? The rotten Reverend Clinton. $5.2 million worth. A lot of... Uh, we don't even know if these Russian sources are real, if it even happened. You know, back earlier in the summer, we were getting these reports that James Comey had been receiving memos from his field agents in Rome, Italy. Little bits and pieces of what would later be found uh, co corroborating what was in the dossier. And apparently, they're mixed up with these Russian sources as well. What if we find out that the FBI spooks in Rome, Italy were not receiving information from these so-called Russian sources, but were rather feeding information to these Russian sources, who were then giving it to the intermediaries, collecting their cash, and on down the line? Because that's what it's looking like. That's what it's looking like to me. How about you? Let's continue. The Obama involvement in the dossier. Obviously, he was involved. And here's some interesting information. There were three former members of the Obama administration who went to work for guess who? the law firm Perkins Coy. Let me say that again. Three attorneys who were part of the Obama administration, three Obama White House lawyers, went to work for the Perkins Coy law firm. The first one, who was the former White House counsel named Bob Bauer, went to work for Perkins Coy after leaving the Obama administration. Pete Rouse, counsel to the chief of staff, left the Obama administration and went to work for Perkins Coy. Mark Patterson, chief of staff at Treasury, left the Obama administration and to work, went to work for Perkins Coy. In the Rotten Reverend's book, she mentions the dossier. She says that basically, a highly respected British intelligence officer wrote a memo, wrote memos with damaging information about Trump and his Russian associations, and that that became the source that led the FBI to begin an investigation. Never, never does she make the statement in that book, does she make the assertion in this book, her book, What Happened? Never does she say, after saying that statement, never does she say that she was the one that was paying for the dossier that this highly respected British intelligence officer put together. She never says in the book, there are many types of lies, my friends, and the Rotten Reverend uses them all. One type of lie is called a lie of omission. You fail to say something which would be pertinent and important to a point. And here, she's making the point in her book about how this investigation into Trump-Russia began. She's basing it on this uh, British intelli intelligence officer, Christopher Steele. She makes it sound like it's some distant thing that has nothing to do with her. When in fact, she is the one, the major payer for the dossier. Now, all you suckers out there who are reading your What Happened Hillary Reverend Rotten Clinton book, when you get to that particular paragraph in the book and you see that the Rotten Reverend Clinton has put this statement in the book but failed to tell you she was the one paying for it, you should feel like a fool and an idiot. You should demand your money back. 
you should go to her next book signing with your book and slam her over the head with it. Maybe you should slam yourself over the head with it for buying it in the first place. You damn fools. A book of lies. But the truths are coming to surface and I expect there'll be a mass book burning in the future from all them suckers who got swindled for however many dollars it was that they paid for that pile of garbage known as a book called What Happened. We're learning what happened. It has nothing to do with what's in that damn book. That's for sure. We'll have more about that in future videos. Simply don't have time to get to it today. People say my videos are too long. Well, let me tell you what. I have enough information here. I have enough in my notes. I could do a four hour video. We'll be lucky to get to 10%. When we started this thing, going back to early in the summer, there were two questions that everyone was trying to get the answer to. Two questions. Number one, who was the Democratic donor that paid for the dossier? And number two, who leaked it to BuzzFeed? The two questions, the imminent, preeminent questions that everyone has been trying to get the answer to for the last seven, eight months. Three different committees in Congress using various subpoenas. Journalists, I mean real journalists, not the fake news media, real journalists digging and digging. And at some point we learned that Maggie Haberman and some other journalists actually did begin to sniff this out and they actually did talk to Mr. Elias and that he denied it. So they thought, okay, well, he's denying it. Uh, and everyone they talked to in the Clinton campaign denied it. So they thought, well, I guess it wasn't the Clinton campaign because that was the first thought everyone had. You'll see if you go back and watch my Towergate videos, I mentioned it on several occasions that, hey, the Democratic donor was probably Hillary Clinton. But I was only saying that really jokingly because I couldn't imagine that the rotten reverend would be stupid enough along with the DNC to get themselves caught up in some bullshit like this. Didn't they think that that would come out? No, because they probably thought we're going to win the election and we can bury it. Could be the only thing that they could have been thinking. You can't keep something like this quiet, especially when there's financial records that we now have from the FEC and that Mr. Nunez is about to get from GPS Fusion. Oh, and he's going to learn a lot more because there's much more to be learned from that. Believe me, there are other people involved in this. There are other people involved who are working with Mr. Elias at his law firm, Perkins & Coy. It's not just GPS Fusion. No, no, no. This is much bigger. There are more people involved. And Devin Nunez is about to get two years worth of bank records which is going to reveal to him who some of these other people were and what was going on. There were monies going other places. $5.2 million, no way. Uh, that's too much money going into GPS Fusion and Christopher Steele and the phony Russian sources, if they were Russian sources at all. No way. Something tells me that's too damn much money. There's got to be some other people receiving some money and it was all being handled. Keep in mind, what this was was the rotten Reverend Clinton and the DNC trying to use a straw man, trying to use a middleman to keep the bloodhounds off the trail. That was his role. His role was to make sure that the Clinton campaign and the DNC directly were not paying GPS Fusion. So they used Mr. Elias as a middleman. And he has quite the background. I've been looking into the background of Mr. Elias. Maybe I'll have time to reveal that to you in the next couple of days. You'll be very, very surprised at Mr. Elias, and you'll find that he is not just your average lawyer. No, no, no. He is deeply connected to all sorts of very, very dirty dealings with many other Democrats, including the Clintons and the DNC in the past. He is a close confidant, confidant of them. He's not just some lawyer that they stuck in the middle here. No, no, no. He's deeply involved in many, many things going back a long time with the DNC, other things. He might even have some involvement in the Seth Rich events. We're working on that. So the first question has now been answered. We know the question, the answer to question number one. 
the Rotten Reverend Clinton and the DNC, and we'll be, there'll be others, were the ones paying for the dossier. So now that leaves the second question. Who gave it to BuzzFeed? Well, we learned from the deposition that Mr. Steele over in London says he didn't do it. The lying Senator Magoo says he didn't do it. His right-hand man, David Kramer, has refused to answer the question of his involvement. He just simply won't reply. GPS Fusion says that in their defamation, uh, the filing, their court filings and their defamation suit in Florida has revealed that, bu that uh, BuzzFeed did contact them and asked them for the dossier and they refused. So the question we've all been asking is, wait a minute, you know, if these are the only people that had the dossier, then one of them had to be the leaker to BuzzFeed. But now we've got two new players. We've got the Rotten Reverend Clinton herself and the DNC, which would essentially be Debbie Blabbermouth Wasserman Schultz. So guess what's going to happen now? What do you think Mr. Gubarev's attorneys are doing right now since they heard this revelation? <laughs> I tell you exactly what they're doing. They are now preparing their court filings and you can expect that Debbie Blabbermouth Wasserman Schultz and the Rotten Reverend Clinton are about to be served legal papers that they are now being sued, are being brought up in the defamation lawsuit. Now it can be done one of two ways. Either Mr. Gubrev's attorneys can now use this revelation to go to the judge in the existing lawsuit that's happening in Florida and he can say, hey, based on these new revelations, we now have two new sources, likely sources, for who may have given the, these, this uh, dossier to BuzzFeed. So therefore, we now want to subpoena them and force them into deposition. Because once you've been named in a civil lawsuit and, and the attorney uh, representing the plaintiff uh, files this petition against you and charges you with having been uh, involved in a crime that did injury to their client, you are then forced, forced to give a deposition. So it really doesn't matter what the hell they do in Congress and these committees. It doesn't matter, really, because the civil law lawsuit, as I've been telling you, is what you want to keep your eye on. Because now, once Mr. Gubarev's attorneys uh, force that particular play that hand and they serve the legal papers on Debbie Blabbermouth Wasserman Schultz and the Rotten Reverend Clinton, they will have no choice. Their attorneys will have to go and file a deposition telling everything about their association with the dossier and with BuzzFeed. That's what's coming. The Rotten Reverend she is about to have many more poop stains in her Chairman Mao uniforms. She's going to be going through a lot of Chairman Mao uniforms because there's going to be a lot of pooping going on with the Rotten Reverend. She will be toilet bound. Lots of depends. She will be getting a major delivery soon. She's going to need them. We also learned, let's not forget, we also learned in the deposition from Mr. Steele in London that his attorneys stated that the dossier came from unauthorized, unsolicited, anonymous sources. Let me say that again for those of you who didn't quite get it. Get it this time. Christopher Steele's attorneys and the deposition filing in London, England, said that their client, Christopher Steele, told them that the information in the dossier came from unauthorized, unsolicited, anonymous sources. Did you get that, CNN, MSNBC, Young Turks? Did you get that? Read the fucking deposition. I did. It's public information. They're on TV spouting their bullshit, acting as if that deposition doesn't exist. 
It does exist, and it's public information. It's in a PDF file. It's a lot of words. It took me an hour and a half to fucking read it. They need to read it. I'm starting to get angry. I apologize for the, for the cursing, but my blood's starting to boil. I don't like being lied to. I don't like being fucked with. So how did these sources get the information to steal? Well, I smell a CIA rat. And Hillary's bitch boy, John Brennan, played it off in the hearings like he didn't know anything about oh, the dossier. Uh, yeah, that dossier. Yeah, we heard about the dossier. Yeah, we didn't take it all that seriously. Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. No way he didn't have his nose all the way up Christopher Steele's ass and knows all about it. I would not be surprised in the least to find that the people feeding this information to these so-called Russian sources were either CIA operatives or possibly FBI spooks. And this was, this was all a deep state plot to create the dossier, to feed it to the media, and then to come out and do the investigation on it. Total sting operation. Exactly what it looks like to me. Looks like the FBI, the CIA, the entire deep state working with the Clinton campaign, the DNC, Fusion GPS being their point man, was working with Steele to set up a sting on Trump to destroy his candidacy. Who gave the dossier to BuzzFeed? Was it the DNC, the Rotten Reverend, the FBI, the CIA? This will be the next shoe to drop. And we're likely to learn about it once the Rotten Reverend Clinton and the DNC receive their court order, letting them know that they have now been named in the defamation lawsuit against Mr. Gubarev, and that they are now going to have to go with their attorneys into court, into civil hearings, and they are going to have to file a deposition stating exactly what their role in the dossier was. Follow the civil lawsuit. I have been saying this for months, have I not? Subscribers, I've been telling you, Congress is a distraction. It's a distraction. It's a political theater. It's kabuki theater. It's made to confuse you. Watch the civil lawsuit. It's the civil lawsuit that forced the answer to the first question, and it will be the follow-up to Mr. Gubrev's attorneys filing his de filing his um, order, his motion against Debbie Blabbermouth Wasserman Schultz and the DNC, as well as the Rotten Reverend Clinton and her campaign, which they will be forced to file depositions in that civil suit. And that's how we're going to find out who leaked that to BuzzFeed. If it turns out to be Comey or some FBI spook, or some CIA operative. I don't think the rotten Reverend Clinton or Debbie Blabbermouth Wasserman Schultz are nutty enough, stupid enough, foolish enough to have personally given this to BuzzFeed. I can't imagine they're that stupid. They may be, but probably it was some straw man. This is how things are done. You don't do it yourself. You have someone else do your dirty work. It's classic Clintons. Classic Clintons. Go back and watch my videos from the very beginning of this. And I, I told you, I've been watching the Clintons for a long time. This is how they operate. This is how they operate. And I said that when we get to the bottom of this, you're gonna find the rotten Reverend Clinton and her pervert husband, Crooked Slick Willie, because remember, we learned from, uh, what's her name, one of his uh, uh, sexual abuse victims, that old Slick Willie has a crooked pecker. So both Hillary and Bill are crooked in different ways. telling you, Mr. Gubarev's attorneys are, are waiting, they're watching, they're writing out those legal papers right now. And within the next probably five to 10 business days, the Rotten Reverend Clinton and Debbie Blabbermouth Wasserman Schultz will be served. This is the next thing to watch. This is where we'll be watching very closely. I'll be keeping you informed. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so pissed I gotta go. See ya. Bye.